I've been thinking about you nonstop because of that, because of course, you know, the Upper West Side, um, New York has become the site of a lot of these crazy protests. It's like, wait a minute, New York? New York is heavily Jewish. What's happening? Why in Brooklyn are we having, you know, I heard you talk about the Crown Heights protest. It's like of all places and be and Jews being told, don't come, don't, you know, stay inside. What do you, I want to kick it off with this, John, because I heard on commentary, you say this joke recently, which I was like, oh, oh, okay. I'm starting to get it. Because one of my questions has been, where where are our, our Jewish friends and their allies like us in the streets? Why is it all these pro-Palestinian nutcases who are out there chanting from the river to the to the sea, right? Like where's the other side uh, who says, you know what? We'd like to live in peace. Wouldn't that be nice? October 6th was better than today. Um, and now we're starting to see a little bit more of it, but you told a joke on commentary that made me kind of understand and forgive me because I'm gonna ask you to tell it, but I think it was about two Jewish people who had been sentenced to death by firing squad, right? right? Can you tell this joke? It kind of helped me understand. Sure. So it's a very, uh, uh, two Jews are in front of a firing squad and the commandant of the firing squad says, do you have any last requests? And one of them says, I would like, please, a blindfold. And the other says, Sam, don't make trouble. <laughs> so this this is the mindset of the Jew, the Jewish person through history, powerless, without any real means to fight back. And the only hope that he has is that somebody will take pity on him and let him be. Mm. And that is the situation that Israel was created to make unnecessary any longer. That is why Jews have fought for the last hundred years to get their share in the United States to achieve a certain level of political and economic <clears throat> and social authority so that we are a not brought before firing squads and b we are not reduced to the level of begging for a blindfold so that we don't have to be witnesses to our own death and here we are in 2023 there was a rally yesterday. There was a big rally here in New York on Central Park West uh, of uh, people supporting uh, Jews, Judaism, and Israel in the wake of October 7th. And much of what was going on on the screens was simply uh, an endless roll of the hostages, the 240-odd hostages who are in the, um, in the maw of Hamas and you look at those pictures and you think, well, my guess is they're not staying there asking for a blindfold. These are Sabra, unless they're very little kids who don't know to ask for a blindfold. These are Sabras, these are Israelis, these are proud adults, and they are either fighting back or they are maintaining their dignity in unbelievably undignified and horrible circumstances. And it is a horror that we are living here in the United States, being forced in some sense to defend our right, to defend ourselves against unwarranted, unprovoked attacks of such savagery that the people that I know who have witnessed the videos or walked through the crime scenes at the kibbutzim on the Gaza in the Gaza envelope, which is where the which is where the massacres took place, say that these are images that are seared in their minds that they will never forget and that they are going to have to get psychological treatment to cope with because they cannot sleep because of the horrors that they have seen. And remember, just to finish my monologue here, these 5,000 casualties that were inflicted in Israel, 1,400 dead, more than 3,500 injured, took place in around eight hours. Think about that. And this was hand-to-hand -hand stuff. It wasn't a bomb being dropped on a building. These were people being killed systematically, bloodthirstily, in a relatively short period of time, in what can only be called 
a massacre rampage of psychotic evil proportions. 30 days later, people are yelling at people like us because we do not believe that a ceasefire that would essentially let off the murderers of our people, that they would let them go scot-free. That is what yeah. a ceasefire means, essentially, right? It's stop the fighting, stop doing things. There's no corollary to that, like, hey, you know what? There should be a ceasefire so that Hamas can surrender en masse and be tried for the 5,000 crimes that they committed on October 7th. It's just have a ceasefire and then let things go on as normal. And that I is, almost I almost feel like John they're they're worried Israel's getting the job done. Israel actually is destroying Hamas and they're like, you know what? We need to stop this. It some people genuinely care about civilian casualties, but I think a lot of people really don't want to see Hamas destroyed. I mean, we're hearing it on college campuses. Hamas, it's not a terrorist group. You've misunderstood Hamas. You don't I think we have that just today from where was it, guys? Hold on a second. It was from you pen, of course, you pen. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. six, one way, half a dozen, the other, you pen or yell. Um, where she's out there chanting. Um, this is uh, shared by Bronx Representative Richie Torres, who's a Democrat who's been very good on this whole issue. Uh, this woman putting her perspective on what really happened with Hamas. Take a listen. Do you guys remember the photo of the kids and men laughing and smiling as they sat on top of the Israeli military jeep captured by our freedom fighters? Yes. Do you remember that picture? Yes. Do you remember that picture? Yes! And the several other joyful and powerful images which came from the glorious October 7th. Yes! I want you to picture those in your mind. I want you all to remember how you felt when you saw those images and heard the news. I remember feeling so empowered and happy, so confident that victory was near and so tangible. I want all of you to hold that feeling in your hearts. Never let go of it. Channel it through every action you take. Bring it to the streets. Yes. Go down to the streets every day. And don't ever let them feel that you quietly accept this genocide. Okay. Freedom fighters, in her view. Uh, ju this just in, she's going to be interning for Rashida Tlaib this summer. Um, <laughs> this, this is the message, right? You, As you point out, one month later... Christine, you've been covering the media and, and the campus insanity and, and all of this. She's UPenn. That was in Philadelphia, you know, steps away. But that's the message. It was a glorious feeling of joy. Never forget it as we cheer on our freedom fighters. And as John is pointing out, it wasn't just hand-to-hand -hand murder. It was torture. Everyone seems to want to gloss over that, that the Israelis were tortured. Children were tortured, forced. The, the, the one child who had his hand cut off and, and had to bleed out right there. The, the other children who had to watch their dad's eyes get gouged out before the terrorists turned on them. There, there are so many stories. I just want to like gloss, gloss on by that and talk about the glory of the day. Well, this is actually something, it's, it's downright Orwellian what's happening uh, and despicable in our mainstream media in particular. Uh, she used a word there that she shouldn't have used because it's, it's the incorrect word. She used genocide. So what we have seen is the mainstream media pick up a narrative, a very pro-Palestinian narrative that is accusing Israel of genocide. And you're absolutely right that they have glossed over the barbarity and inhumane and, quite frankly, uh, documented war crimes, documented, by the way, not by the IDF that came in to rescue civilians, but by the terrorists themselves who filmed it on GoPro and often live streamed it back to their friends and family in Gaza while they were murdering innocent women and children. So the fact that very very quickly, the story and the images that we're seeing in all of our newspapers and on most of the mainstream media television broadcasts are all of children in Gaza. Now, as you said earlier, and I know John agrees with me on this, nobody wants to see innocent civilians harmed. That is not the purpose of what is happening right now in Gaza. But innocent civilian deaths in Gaza are the responsibility of Hamas because Hamas has put them in harm's way with its actions. Hamas prevents them from leaving areas where the IDF is is uh, uh, moving forward with military operations to root out terrorists. 
Hamas is responsible for those deaths. But in the West, what we see is this narrative of Israel's committing genocide. Every victim is is on Israel's uh, head and responsible for them. These are war crimes. None of this is true. But all of it is being repeated over and over and over again and has been, unfortunately, for decades, really taken root on campuses in various studies programs um, and in these arguments about uh, colonial uh, oppressors and whatnot. And it's all come to fruition. And what is driving so much of it, what we see clearly on the streets, is hate. It's anti-Semitism. And they can put whatever academic and ideological gloss over it that they want to, but it's very clear their actions and their words are now starting to match. The actions and the words incited by, for example, a representative in Congress, Rashida Tlaib, who has been... uh, having all kinds of anti-Semitic statements that she posts on her social media, uh, such as phrases like from the river to the sea. Everyone knows what that means. And she is denying its own meaning while inciting people to take action. And as the woman in the video clip you just showed us did, to take to the streets. That is incitement. That is calling on people to do violence. And that's wrong. You saw yesterday. Yeah, go ahead, John. I was just going to say that... um... Uh, there's a deli in in LA on Fairfax called Cantor's. Cantor's, yeah. So it's the like premier Jewish deli in Los Angeles. It's been there since 1925. On the wall at Cantor's Deli, outside, are pictures of Cantor's Deli and its growth over time, and sort of pictures of Jewish LA. Cute, black and white, you know, historical pictures. All of them in the last couple of days defaced by things like from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, F Israel, all of that. Now, there is nothing in Israel in the Cantor's Deli photographs. Cantor's Deli is a restaurant that serves pastrami and blintzes and latkes and cream and, you know, cheesecake. Uh, And it is being targeted in response to a massacre of Jews in Israel that has triggered anti-Semitic acts all over the world. Thanksgiving is two weeks away, which means the best Genucel sale of the year, just in time for the holidays. The Genucel most popular package is back for you to look stunning at your Thanksgiving gatherings. And now get the brand new Genucel 3 also included in the most popular package. Sunny from Rockford, Illinois said, I'll give Genucel five stars because the products do exactly what they've promised. It's working. I love all the products and I highly recommend it. Take advantage of the Genucel best sale of the year and say goodbye to fine lines, crow's feet, bags, and puffiness, laugh lines, and dark spots. The Genucel experience is like no other. Look and feel your absolute best or your money back, no questions asked. Go to genucel.com slash mk60 for an incredible holiday discount. Better than 70% off on Genucel's most popular package with the Genucel 3 product and dark spot corrector. And for results in 12 hours or less, the immediate effects product is included in this package for free. Go to genucel.com slash MK60 for a free upgrade to priority shipping at checkout. G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.